Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am Adorkable Rachel and it's time once again for another episode of Rachel Reviews, so let's just hop into it. Coco is the second and thank God, better Pixar film to come out this year. And if you watch me on social media, then you know that I got the feels big time for this movie. Oh my God, I just got out of Coco. <laughs> I'm still a little like emotional because this was such a beautiful movie. And to segue into that video clip, this episode is brought to you by Stardust. Stardust is a free app that you can download onto your phone, link is in the description down below, and it's where I post my immediate reactions after I see a new movie, and I also use it every day to react and review TV shows, movies, and trailers that I don't always get to talk about on this channel. Literally, it is the fastest way to share your reactions with the world if you love TV and movies. And if you download the app, you can post your own reactions, watch other reactors, and if you tag me in one of your reactions, you might get a chance to appear in one of my videos. Stay tuned until the end of this episode to see if your reaction to Coco made it into the video. Arriba! Let's get to the review! Coco tells the story of a young boy in Mexico named Miguel who dreams of becoming a famous musician one day because he has such a huge passion for music. But because of something that his great-great-grandfather did a long time ago, music is banned in his family. But on the night of Dia de Muertos, the Day of the Dead, in a desperate move to prove himself as a musician, Miguel steals the guitar of a famous musician who has long since passed. And doing this suddenly brings him into the land of the dead. So Miguel meets and starts to connect with some of his dead relatives, while also going on an unexpected journey to find out more about his family's history and to see if there's any possible way that he can become a musician while also having his family's approval. And there is a lot more to it than that, but I'm not going to go into it anymore because then we'd be going into spoiler territory and I'm not going to go there. So since there is a lot to love about this movie, I'm actually going to start with a negative this time since this was kind of sort of one big flaw that I noticed about the film. And that's the story. Now before you comment, just hear me out. This movie does kind of have a complicated narrative when you think about it. After an insanely gorgeous and creative introduction that has flashbacks told in the paper picador banners, we then are introduced to Miguel's family, which goes all the way back to his great-great-grandparents. Now they don't literally introduce everybody, but when Miguel starts introducing some of the characters and you realize that you have to kind of think about how everyone's related, yeah, that does get a little bit confusing. In fact, when I saw this movie in the theaters, there was a little girl sitting really close to me and I could hear her clarifying with her dad, who was the grandma and who was the great grandma? And no, 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 that's the great grandma. Oh, it, yeah, it's a little distracting. That aside, when Miguel does make it to the land of the dead, a lot of stuff happens. They have this one theory about how he got there, but that's never really explored, I don't think. And then also he needs to get a blessing from his family, but that doesn't go over really well either. There's a music competition that he tries to participate in to help him meet the famous singer, which might also be connected to this. There's a scoundrel named Hector that shows up who also gets roped into helping Miguel and we learn about his backstory. Also, there's some misunderstandings that lead to this and then that, and then this leads to that and this and this. And it's just like, oh, okay, okay. There's quite a bit we have to keep track of here. But other than that, everything in this movie is freaking fantastic. Miguel was voiced by newcomer Anthony Gonzalez and he does an amazing job bringing this character to life. This kid goes through so many different emotions to make this character arc so believable and relatable and Holy crap, can he sing? And even though I was a little harsh on the story for being so complicated, what I love so much about Gonzalez's performance is that no matter what happens to Miguel or what he gets himself into, we are still with him for the entire time. And yes, that makes it so much easier to absorb all the details. And what's really interesting about a lot of characters in Coco is that they can seem very one note when we first meet them, but as the film goes on, suddenly we start to learn a lot more about them and the different layers to their character as well as their past that helps us relate to them even more. Movie, you fooled me into thinking that I was getting a predictable character. Oh no sir, no, you just totally had to surprise me, didn't you? What a twist! Also, quite a few times in the film there's some plot points that are very casually mentioned but we don't realize that they're being casually mentioned. Someone will say something about themselves or the past like it's no big deal, but then later in the movie that's brought back up and then it turns out it's actually a lot bigger and more important than the audience suspected. That's actually 
genius writing, tricking our minds to establish certain things and then blowing our minds later with the literal meaning. <laughs> yeah, there's actually a number of twists in this movie that all blew my mind. Also, huge kudos to Disney. The entire cast of this film, at least the big main players from what I saw, all have Latino descent. And they're not even really huge names either. No Penelope Cruz, no Selma Hayek, no Jennifer Lopez, no Javier Bardem. The only names that I personally recognized right away were Gael Garcia Bernal and Gabriel Iglesias. And I'm personally really, really impressed. They didn't rely on big names to market this movie. And I think if you look at all the posters, they don't even list the cast. My point being that a lot of times they do that to sell the movie and say, hey, look who's in it. But this one, they didn't need to do that. They scrapped the big names in order to get some really good Latino actors to bring this film to life, so to speak. And they heavily focused on the look and the wonder of the movie in order to market it. And the animation in this movie is so good that it's actually kind of overwhelming. Pixar just keeps on putting out better and better animation with every film they produce and one of my favorite shots in this film is when we first see the land of the dead and you just see all the houses and the colors and the lights and oh my god look at it it's one of the most beautiful shots ever put together in an animated film and there are literally millions and millions of lights in these shots like how many man hours do you think it took to put all of this together and what also really amazes me is that with just about every Pixar film that comes out, the characters and the settings and the details, all of it, it just looks more and more like you could reach out and touch it. It's kind of scary how real everything feels in this movie despite the fact that it's animated and looks like a cartoon. This! This is more effective than most motion capture projects! Even with all the colors and the cartoony designs, you just feel like you're right in the middle of it, experiencing the whole thing. And I didn't even see this movie in 3D! And I also like that in this movie, the land of the dead just seems so much more alive and vibrant than our world. <laughs> wow, I am definitely not the first person to say that. If that's how it's gonna be when I die, then I have nothing to fear when I pass away. It's a freaking party in here all day! There are also several moments in this film that just kind of let you absorb what the characters are feeling, and it usually doesn't even have a lot of dialogue. Either there's just music playing or someone singing a beautiful song, and it's just those moments that the mood lets itself tell the story. And that's not easy to do, but with the stunning visuals and the mesmerizing music, it just gets the point across perfectly. And because of this, the film uses its time very efficiently. And there are some songs that are sung in Spanish in this movie, but even if you don't speak Spanish, like me, you can still feel the intent behind the singing. It's just... it's so captivating. Something else that I noticed and find very interesting is that when you think about it, we actually have seen this story a lot in other movies. The main character has this big dream but doesn't have the approval of their family, so they go on this big journey to find themselves and fix something. And also a lot of the plot points and twists and even the resolution is pretty similar to stuff that we've seen in the past, and actually we've seen this millions of times in stories and movies and shows and just like everything under the sun that you could think of. But as it goes with any kind of storytelling for pretty much any medium, it doesn't always matter if the story has been done before or if the themes and the lessons have been recycled over and over and over again. What matters is what can you possibly bring to the table that makes it new? How can you put a unique spin on it to make it feel fresh and new? This movie, even though when you really think about it we've seen a lot of this stuff before, it still does exactly that. And I do think that a lot of that does have to do with the elements of Dia de Muertos, which we have not seen in a lot of films. But it also has a lot to do with the really interesting and relatable characters and all the different twists and turns this story takes and the way that it plays with our expectations. Also, how many Hollywood feature films have you seen out there that's just so rich with Mexican culture? And it also makes me really happy that when we have a lot of films out there that seem to kind of appropriate culture, we have still been hearing that this film has had such a great reception from Latino audiences, and it's even been released early in Mexico, and everyone
everyone there apparently loves it. And it's also really neat watching a film like this because we get to just appreciate the culture by the way that the characters are introduced and seeing the environment that they live in. There's never a point when they're like, we're Mexican and we do Mexican things and also kind of accidentally going into stereotypes. They don't really do that. We just get to enjoy the culture for what it is. As a lot of people have said, this really is just a genuinely beautiful love letter to Mexico. And I really don't want to go into spoilers, but one thing that I do have to know is that after watching what these characters go through and seeing the journey that it took to get them to the final resting place, yes pun intended, um, the final climax of this film is literally one of the most touching resolutions that I've ever seen in any movie. Not just an animated movie, in any movie. In fact, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that it was more touching to me than Toy Story 3's ending. And I heard that people did cry when they went and saw this movie, and I don't normally cry in family films. It takes a lot for me to cry. Like, I love Inside Out, but that didn't even make me cry. But this film, it did make me cry. And I could hear other people around me crying. It is that beautifully effective. And it's not just because of the look and the gorgeous animation, it's also because of the compelling story and the vibrant imagery and how alive it is and how musical it is and also because of how effective the theme of family is used. Coco is undoubtedly one of the most unique, real, and dare I say even best films that Pixar has ever produced. And I think it's definitely up there in my top five films that I've seen this year. And you know what? I am positive that it is going to win Best Animated Film at the Oscars next year. If it does not win, it is going to be the crime of Oscar animation history. Pixar's Coco celebrates family and culture in a way that people of all generations and all cultures can relate to. And hey, if you're interested, it's probably the best introduction to Dia de Muertos since the Halloween tree. Anyone want to go to Mexico next year? Because I gotta go experience this holiday for myself. So those are my thoughts on Disney Pixar's Coco, and now here's this week's Stardust Reaction winner and their thoughts on the film. So here's my ticket for Coco, and it was really amazing. I can name a lot of things that are amazing. The music, the characters, the emotion, and the message of being for your family, even when it's hard. And one of my favorite things of any Pixar movie, including this, was the big twist. That's all I'm gonna say, it was a big twist. Yay! Thanks, Micah. So now I wanna know, did you guys get a chance to see it yet? And if so, what did you think? Did you like it? Were you moved by it? Do you agree it's one of the best films Pixar's ever made? Is there anything that you don't like about it? Also, let me know, do you celebrate Dia de Muertos? And if so, how do you celebrate? Well, go ahead and leave your comments below. Be sure to like and share. And if you're new and like what you saw here, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And also be sure to hit the little bell button down there to get notified when new stuff comes out because I make new videos every week. Adios, Adorka Buddies. I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.